You guys know that old saying, art imitates life? Yeah, because Lego just released an absolutely massive set of the Roman Colosseum, and to celebrate the launch, they've asked us to make a video giving some context to its lengthy history and surprising diversity of uses over the ages. This arena is easily one of the most famous pieces of classical architecture, and it's an excellent summation of the ups and downs of ancient Roman culture. Is that a, uh, thumbs up, thumbs down gladiator joke? I am electing to ignore that question. So, with the help of our friends and sponsors at Lego, let's do some history. In the century following the reign of Augustus, the Roman Empire was having a pretty good time, what with the vast riches ruling over most of the known world and not having to fight a civil war every 30 minutes. But life wasn't all shiny marble temples and perfectly paved roads because some of the emperors were real pieces of work, like Nero, a self-obsessed tyrant and alleged pyromaniac who built a palace in the middle of the city after a let's say, conveniently located fire cleared a spot for him. But his lavish narcissism and wild unpopularity became an opportunity for the later Emperor Vespasian, who demolished Nero's private palace and promised to replace it with something meant for the Roman public, and in 72 AD, construction began on a massive amphitheater in the center of the city. Typically, earlier Greek theaters were semicircular and carved into the nearest available hillside, but this Roman amphitheater was fully round and freestanding and big. Man, you really have to hand it to those Roman architects. Boy, do we. But weirdly enough, the name Colosseum doesn't refer to the colossalness of the stadium, but of a huge statue of Nero left over from the demolished palace, later redecorated into a statue of the sun god Helios. And while the current building is a little uh, incomplete, we can see from the surviving outer wall that the Romans spared no expense in ornamentation. The amphitheater had three stacked colonnades of the Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian styles in ascending order of Dance. But Blue, surely they didn't just build this giant freestanding structure for funsies. They had to have actually done stuff with it, right? Honestly, knowing the Romans, I wouldn't put it past them. But you're right, this building was quite the venue. The Flavian Amphitheater, as it was known in the day, played host to all kinds of events. There were, of course, the flashy gladiatorial matches that earned Rome so much moral infamy, but it also held chariot races, parades, animal hunts, reenactments of scenes from mythology and history, and somehow entire naval battles. Always in in pursuit of greater and greater spectacle, the showrunners of the Colosseum could flood the arena and stage fights between tiny navies. Those got moved to a separate arena after Domitian installed a maddeningly complex labyrinth of machinery beneath the arena. This hypogeum was a network of tunnels and some 60-some-odd lifts that allowed people, animals, and props to be raised right up into the middle of the action. In the event of a beast hunt, the stage crew could keep the hunter on their toes by releasing the next animal, or three, from anywhere in the arena. Drama. And despite lacking a, uh, roof, the top of the Colosseum was no slouch for stage mechanics either, as it had a series of retractable awnings to keep the spectators nicely shaded. So, uh, what about that stuff I read on the Colosseum seeing some serious action as a venue for persecution by involuntary zoo? As it happens, yeah, the thing with the lions was popularized during the Renaissance, but it's doubtful it ever actually happened. In fact, that won't be the first time people misinterpreted the Colosseum. A millennium after the fall of the Roman Empire, scholars assumed the building was originally a giant open-air temple to a pagan sun god, like a bigger, roofless version of the Pantheon. It took a surprising amount of time for us to realize that the giant sporting venue was in indeed a giant sporting venue. After the Empire, it obviously fell into disrepair, but it was still in active use, if not for its original intended purpose. Because later generations of Romans wouldn't look a gift megastructure in the mouth, it was retrofitted with apartments, stalls for food vendors and tradespeople, artisan workshops, a church, a fortress, briefly in the 1100s, long story, and most consequentially, it was used as a marble quarry. In fairness to the medieval Romans, an earthquake in 1349 politely dismantled the south wall for them, so, look, what else are you gonna do with it? But this practice of reduce, reuse, ruin also applied to the bronze clamps that originally held the stones together, which later Romans pried off and melted down, hence the speckled appearance today. The Colosseum may well have become little more than a sketch in a history book if not for the preservation instincts of post-Renaissance Romans. The Colosseum was ordained a holy site in 1749, and after Italian unification in 1871, Rome began an extensive excavation and conservation program that continues to today. Wow, that is quite the lively history for an arena built as a glove slap to Emperor Nero. It sure is, and being a gorgeous piece of architecture designed in service of brutal combat and lavish spectacle, there really is no better icon for the Roman Empire. And that's our quick look at the history of the Colosseum. We hope this helps put some context behind the building and let you better appreciate the design of the set. Thank you again to LEGO for giving us the opportunity to talk about this today. If you'd like to check out this beautiful behemoth of a build for yourself, you can click the link in the description. 
But like, seriously, though, this set is way cool. Oh, totally. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get back to building because this set is one seriously big boy. Later.